Hi, my name's Random Tuesday, and I think witches' hats are not just for Halloween. They're for gallivanting in the woods at midnight, a summer ren fair, or your everyday wardrobe. So I'm going to show you how to make your very own wide-brimmed, pointy-hatted witch's hat perfect for any occasion. My hat is based off of the design from the video game Spirit Swap, which you can learn more about in the description below. But obviously you can customize the textures, the colors, the patterns, and the decorations for whatever look it is you're trying to recreate. To get started, we're going to need to grab three measurements. First is the circumference of our head. And you wanna take this measurement wherever it is you plan on wearing your hat. I like to wear mine kind of low and behind the ears. So I take my measurement around here. If you're going to wear it, perhaps what one might say more traditionally around the top of your head, you wanna grab that measurement there. Next, we wanna figure out the height of our hat. To figure out the height, I just hold the tape measure as high up and take a look at it. Do I think that's too tall? Not tall enough, get a feel. If you're not sure with just a tape measure, you can always use a piece of paper cut into a cone to really get a sense of how tall you want the point of your hat to be. Also remember to take into account if you want it to sag or slump or flop in some way, you wanna make sure you have a long enough hat to do that. And the last measurement is the brim. We wanna know how big we want our brim to be. So kind of the same as with the peak or the point, I just hold my tape measure out to get a sense of is this the right size? Is it a little bit too big? And adjust it from there. I find about six inches tends to be the right sort of size for a good brim that's bulky but not obnoxious. Once we have our measurements, we're ready to start sewing. On your brim fabric, start by drawing a circle that's the same size as the circumference of your head. Make sure you have enough space around the circle for whatever size brim you're going to want to have. Next, using your ruler, mark at several intervals around that circumference, from the head circumference to the edge of the brim. So this is whatever measurement you decided you want that brim. Essentially, we're drawing a really nice big donut that is going to have a hole in the center that's big enough for our head to fit in and be large enough around the outside for whatever size brim we want to have on our hat. Once you've marked those points, connect them together into a complete circle. Then cut out the brim donut that you've just made, leaving enough seam allowance both around the head circumference and the edge of the brim. Repeat this process again on both your lining or underside fabric of the brim, as well as heavy duty, uh, I used craft interfacing. So this is the sort of stuff that has a good amount of structure on its own. For the interfacing, you don't need to include a seam allowance. You can cut those out directly at the measured lines. Next, take your brim donut, yes, that's what I'm going to keep calling it, and pin your top fabric and your bottom fabric together right sides facing. Then you'll stitch your two pieces together along the drawn brim line. Trim the edge of the brim as close as you can to that seam because we want to remove as much bulk as possible. Flip your brim right sides out and then smooth that edge as much as you can to get it as flat as possible. Next, take your piece of interfacing and stuff it inside of the brim that you just sewed. You want to get it as flat as possible. That might mean if your stitching or your cutting wasn't entirely perfect, you need to make a few trims and snips here and there to get it to lie flat inside of the brim donut. Now we have a brim donut sandwich. After that, finish smoothing out the interfacing and pin all three layers together, our over fabric, our under fabric, and our interfacing. Next, we're going to sew a channel for us to thread our wire through, which will help us keep our brim in shape as well as be able to adjust or manipulate the shape to make it extra cool. The channel only needs to be about a quarter to a third of an inch, depending on how thick the wire is that you're planning on using. Make sure you leave a gap in your sewing so that you actually have a space to thread the wire through. About an inch should do it. After that, we're ready to add our wire. I start by folding one end of the wire over to make it a little bit less pokey and pointy. You could also wrap it in tape or something else. Really, you just want a way to help you thread that wire through. Then just thread that wire through the channel that you just made. It can be a little bit fiddly because the channel is nice and snug, but if you just keep going, you'll find that the wire pushes its way all the way through, or you can help it along as you need to. Once you reach the end, twist your wire together in order to close it off and tuck it nicely inside that channel. After that, we take it back to the machine and close out that seam very carefully so you don't break your needle on the wire. To create the peak of our hat, 
start by drawing a line that is the length of the peak that you would like. I went with 18 inches. Then from one end of that line, you're going to mark several points of the same length along it, as if you were essentially drawing a very large circle, but we're not gonna draw the whole circle. We're just creating a small portion of it. From the center line, measure half the circumference of your head measurement. So half the circle around your head and mark that along the line, connecting that curve together and then connecting that bottom of the curve to that top point. Once we fold this over and cut it along the fold, we'll be creating a full cone that will be the same circumference as our head measurement. Fold the cone you just drew over and cut it out, leaving enough space as before for a seam allowance. Create a second cone for the lining of the hat, except the lining hat cone, you can go ahead and truncate slightly. Make sure that it's big enough that it'll fit over your head, but it doesn't need to have the full point because we're going to be stuffing the peak of our hat. Next, sew the peak's outer fabric and the lining fabric into a cone or a truncated cone along those outer cut edges. Then loosely stuff the outer fabric of the peak, mostly focusing on the top half because obviously the bottom portion of the peak is where your head's gonna sit. You don't need to completely stuff it unless you want a really filled look for your hat. I'm using just basic polyester fiber fill stuffing. Uh, you can use a different material if you want a different texture or a different level of structure. The stuffing is really just to help the hat keep its shape while it's sticking up on top of your head. After that, take the lining piece that you had, keeping it so that the right side is out, but in this case, that's gonna be the part connected to your head and place it inside the peak that you just sewed, matching up those back seams together. Then we're going to pin the peak of the hat to the brim of the hat, making sure that our right sides are together. So our outer fabric is in contact with our outer fabric. After that, we're going to sew the brim to the peak of the hat along that line we just pinned. To finish the seam, you have a couple of options. I chose to run mine through on the serger because I have a serger and it's easier. You can also cover that seam in bias tape or do something fancy like a French seam or a blind hem. Optionally, you can also, in my case, because I have a serged edge, top stitch it to the inside of the brim to kind of stop it from flopping around or showing up when you put the hat on your head. Once your hat's assembled, the last part is to add whatever decorations you want. I created the rings to match the design from the video game Spirit Swap, but maybe you're going to add flowers or trinkets or feathers or skulls or whatever else will fit with the aesthetic that you're going for. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what other totally normal everyday attire you would like to learn how to create, and I'll see if I can make a tutorial for them. And also check out my website, randomtuesday.com, for more information, resources, patterns, tutorials, and lots of other great stuff if you're learning or looking to sew or cosplay. And you can check me out live on twitch.tv slash randomtuesday, where I'm always happy to answer questions. And as always, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who made this video and this hat a reality. If you're able to do so, any monthly amount is truly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.